Hello, welcome to another tea time. Where we drink tea and talk crap. Yay! <sighs> yeah, lots of crap. Yeah, so what are we talking about today? You tell me. What are we talking about, wife? Today, we are talking about pet peeves. Pet peeve is an English term for... Things that give me the shits. Yeah, so, I mean, everyone's got pet peeves, whether it's um, between you and your relationship, because I've got loads, um, or whether it's because people piss you off at work, or people in the street piss you off, or shit on TV pisses you off. There's loads, isn't there? Oh, I mean, yeah. I literally walk around like a ball of rage 90% of the time, don't I? Yeah. So, you know, but this topic suits me down to the ground, to be fair. So, number one. One, the main thing that pisses me off in life in general would be people bumping into me when I'm out shopping and not giving a shit. Oh, I find that really rude. Look, I've got my arms crossed already. That pisses me off. Not apologising, not acknowledging that they've just gone literally banging past you. And I'm a tall person. I'm Isn't that one of your pet peeves as well? Like, oh, what's the weather like up there? Yeah, I'll come on to that in a moment. <laughs> uh, there's another thing that pisses me off slash pet peeve. But yeah, it's like people bump into you and then just shoulder barge you as if I still want to start a fight with you and then they just walk off as if nothing happened. And they refuse to move even though you've moved an inch or two to the side or you've moved your shoulder back so they can get past. They still... They still just really want to just walk past you and go, mm, boom. Yeah, or so, what the, f- what the or, hell? Or it's those people that when you're out and about, they they're walking along and you're behind them, and then they just have a brain fart and just stop dead, and you go up their ass. Yes. <laughs> Two for me. Another one that pisses me off is uh, people that cut you up on the road and try to bring on road rage purposefully. They see you come in and they know they've got about two seconds to get out in front of you and to speed up to about 40 miles per hour, but they think, you know what, fuck it. They've got to stop if they see my car, I'm going to go anyway. Mm. So then you have to slow right down. Now that pisses me off. That that, that that causes road rage, but then when they continue on that road at 20 mile an hour and you've just been going 40 at the speed limit and they go 20, oh my God, if you're going to cut me up, do the right fucking speed. Yeah, it's like, yeah. But I mean, having said that, you do drive like a granddad. So I don't know what you're talking about, driving at 40 miles an hour. You do 30 miles an hour everywhere. I wonder about people cutting me off though. I know, but And like... then doing 20. <laughs> oh, that, that brings me on to another pet peeve of um, the fact that you you have damaged every single one of our cars so far that we've, uh, we've ever owned. No, I haven't. No, I haven't. This goes along with people that don't look after their shit. I used to have new socks every like four or six weeks because he keeps putting holes in them or every car that we've had you've broken Hang on, why, why are we going car, cars and because driving? Because you ruin shit. I, my pet peeve is people that ruin shit. Threw their, to- their phone down the toilet or in the sink or in the bath and then broke it. And then who got it repaired and fixed it? But then, but then who broke it again? To the point where I had to buy a new phone. I would just like to point out that in my entire career of having phones, I've broken one. One phone in nearly 12, 15 plus years. No, more than. I've had a phone since the year 2000. So one phone in... since the year 2000. One phone in 17 years is nothing. He, on the other hand, went through five phones in two years. Oh, shit. <laughs> people that break shit are a pet peeve. And then another pet peeve of mine is people that dodge responsibility for the shit that they yeah, do. Yeah, that really pisses me off. Yes. Yes, it really irritates me, right? So I've got an example of this. I'm sorry but to get my box about and get really passionate, but let's just say you have an issue in a professional setting. Now, if I've done something wrong, I'll go, sorry about that. That was my fault. I didn't mean to. It was an oversight. Really? Can you record yourself doing that? Because I'd like to see you. No, I said in a professional setting, in a personal setting, I'm always right. People say when I've done something wrong, it really pisses me. Not not the dodging responsibility thing, the finger pointing the other way. People that play the system purposefully, purposefully play the system mm. to their advantage, so that they don't have to. They don't have to work. They can stay at home and you know things like that. Um, 
it winds me up because the system is so flawed that the line becomes un invisible almost between people that genuinely need help, that genuinely can't yeah. work for health reasons or for other reasons versus the, pe the people that really they can work mm. but they just choose not to. I agree with your point about people that are bludging the system. Is it bludging the system? Bludging from people? Mocking? Taking the piss out of the system because like, I used to work for an advocacy company, right? And what used to rip, give me the shits and rip my heart apart was the fact that people that felt like they were entitled because they had very mild asthma, you know, would ring up and demand that they had full disability benefit. They would say, I need this, I need that, blah, blah, blah. However, on the other side of the fence, the people that really needed it were generally the ones that had no idea what their rights were, you know. So I will always remember that woman that rang me up and she was looking after a very disabled boy and all the rest of it. And she'd been on her own for nearly nine years or whatever it was. And she just needed a break. And she was telling me on the phone how awful it was, that, how awful she felt for asking for a break. And there's me saying, well, you know, we have this thing called respite care and you can get funding for this and funding for that. And I'll never forget that because it, ch it changed their life in that way. So my pet peeve with regards to people that are bludging the society for all the money that is out there, it doesn't matter whether the system is easy to get the money out of. It's how can you look at yourself in the mirror knowing that you could get off your ass and contribute to people like that, but because you're taking the money out of the pot, you are stopping people like that woman from having some respite care or her son being able to go and do things, you know, like music therapy or light therapy and stuff like that that would have really helped him. And that pisses me off. It's like you get these people that go on to like these morning programs and these women that go, oh, well, I'll just punch out another kid or, you know, all the rest of it because, well, I'm going to get paid so much for it. We've all heard the stories, but yet you've got this, you know, this family that's living down the street because a father has had a stroke in his, like, mid-50s. No pension, no savings, no nothing because he was doing the right thing, trying to look after his family, and now he can't afford to feed them because he's not working anymore and his wife has got, is trying to raise the two young children and now look after a stroke patient at home. What funding do they get? Fuck all, because it gets taken away because the government are assholes and they give it more to people that sit on their ass and do nothing all day. So anyway, like another pet peeve of mine. <laughs> I don't mean to get dead serious then. That pisses me off, <laughs> yeah. When I go into a building or a public place, me off, yeah, when I have to walk through this door before I go into the building, before I go into the door of the building, it's called a door of second-hand smoke. Why do, people, why do people smoke at oh. the entrances of buildings right. so that all you people like me that don't want lung cancer or no, chest infections just smokers, smokers in general, I, I just think you should just trund trundle yourself off to your own island. They just piss me off as well. Like, I just, I've got no Probably time. millions of smokers have watched this that get offended. Okay, I'm sorry, get offended by my opinion. <laughs> sorry. Fuck's sake. But like, I just, I just don't like it. I think it makes you look ugly, you age yourself, you're gonna kill yourself, and it stinks. I, 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 I don't know. I, I think people have been smoking since God knows when, and at the end of the day, it's up to them. But you need to have oh, some respect. Oh, get the fence out your ass. Have an opinion. I do have an opinion. My opinion is that if, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. I have protein shakes. People have opinions about protein shakes, and I understand that they may not agree. I have a square face. People have an opinion about my square face. It's not if I can move it around. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, when you walk into a public place or you walk into a building, okay, what you don't expect is to walk through this giant screen of smoke, yeah, where the smoke is literally so thick that you can't help but inhale some. Get real. Yeah. No. Traffic. 
That's a universal one. Everyone no, hates no. traffic. No, no. Traffic in this shithole called Pokemon Trent pisses me off. I have no idea where all these pricks live, but whenever I'm on the road, every motherfucker wants to be on the road as well. And I don't understand why it takes me an hour and five minutes to go seven miles. And then you get the people that don't understand how fucking roundabouts work. I'm getting on it again. That people don't understand how fucking roundabouts work and they don't understand how feeding lanes work. Americans don't have roundabouts. Right, a roundabout looks like that. Right? A cop. It's fucking round. People treat it. It's not an overbout, right? So, like, you're supposed to enter the roundabout and go around it. Or you can go around it and then straight forward. No, no, but if people come from this side of the cup and go to that side of the cup, they think it's a fucking overbout. And it doesn't matter if there's two lanes or three lanes, they just go, well, good luck with that, I go off now. <laughs> so people that don't understand feeding lanes really pisses me off too. Yeah, the feeding yeah, lane yeah. is, specifically, you've got to feed in one another. So if one car is in front of the other, that car that is in front has right of way. And I'm not talking about get up in each other's business and tr and try and get in front. You know which car is going to end up in front. So what are you going to get by getting one car length in front? I mean, like, do you have to be that much of a champion of your own fucking universe <laughs> to be one car length in front? It's, it's a bit, it's a bit People that don't indicate piss me off as well. What, do you think I've got crystal balls sitting in my, <laughs> sitting in my dashboard? Hmm. Oh, okay, so this person's been in front of me for 90% of my journey. I'm now coming up to what looks to be a roundabout, not an overbout. You're in the same lane that I'm in, and I'm indicating to go round to the right, but yet you're a prick and you've got no indicators on. Are you going to go over the roundabout? Or are you going to go right? Because if you're going to go right and there's no arrow on the fucking floor, you need to be indicating people piss me off. Oh my god. Man, that really does my head in. When you go to one of these fast food places, or well, specifically a drive-through, okay? Fast food. Yeah, some places are really not fast food. But when you go to a drive-through, and then you pick up your order, um, it really pisses me off when they miss out like su super huge chunks of your order, like, and then you've driven off. So then you've you've gotten halfway down the road, you've quickly had a quick look in your bag, and you think. I've got no fucking nuggets. Where are my nuggets? And then you've gone down the road, so you think, you know what? I can't be bothered. Where are my nuggets? I can't actually be asked to Where do where you are my nuggets? <laughs> I can't be asked to turn around and to drive back through Try the drive through <laughs> and wait in the very small queue to Get ask my for nuggets. my nuggets. <laughs> that pisses me off. I mean, that that's got to be a really strong pet peeve that you brought up nuggets. It pissed me off that much. I rang the fast food chain and I said to them on the phone, the I went to one of your branches. And I went to one of your branches? I went to one of your fast food stores. I went to one of, I went to one of you because you're millions of around the world. And I said, I'd like this meal, but you gave me half the meal. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to fucking do about it? And they went, oh, well, we'll give you a voucher. So... You did so not say that. You're way too polite for that. You went, oh, excuse me, <laughs> excuse me, but you uh, seem to have forgotten my nuggets, my good friend. <laughs> um, what could I ask what you would do to make this up to me? <laughs> That's more like you. The joy that twists me up. What? When people go on into the gym and they clearly don't know what the hell they're doing. So they pick up the heaviest possible weight that they can to try and make out that there's some sort of supreme master of fucking weights, right? Some sort of bodybuilder, powerlifter from the world from the world of strength, right? And then pick up this dumbbell which is the size of their entire torso and try and lift it above their head and then press it. You can see that their vertebrae has just snapped, but they keep this face of like, I've yeah. got this, I've got this, I've got this. People aren't blind and people aren't stupid. Right. Whoa, look at the ambulance that just pulled up to yeah. the way. Yeah, look at your body. It's now in an S shape, but it shouldn't be. Yeah. What pisses me off? Well, me. When I leave the car window open on a snowy, icy day, and I get in the car, and the seat is wet. When did you do that? I've done it a couple of times. Well, that's, that goes with my original point. You're one of those fucking people that doesn't look after shit, and doesn't remember shit, and now I'm getting irritated because I'm thinking of all this shit that you'd mess up. 
and you break. Do you know what pisses me off as well? People. Do you know what another thing that pisses me off? People that nag you? No. When people leave chewing gum on the surfaces that you know you've got to use. Oh, like yeah. cinema seats. Yeah. You lift the cinema seat down, you take your hand off, Ooh. and it's stuck. I mean, it is cretin behavior, isn't it? You can judge how long that chewing gum has been there by its stickiness. If it's, if it's... No, 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 no. You can judge how much, how new it was, or how long it had how been chewed it for <laughs> by the stickiness. Because if it, if it doesn't have any tackiness to it, you know that they put it there because it ran out of flavor. However, if it's still tacky and a bit moldable, mal, mal, malleable, malleable, whatever, that I, thing, I that it. thing when you can push it and it, not that I've played with random people's <laughs> chewing gum underneath seats, but if you could, yeah. if you could do that and it's sticky, that means that they brought something into the cinema and then they had to get rid of the chewing gum. It's a known science. I found a tooth in one once. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, thing that does my, does my tree in. What? When I go in the supermarket, I've talked about being knocked into, talked about people not moving out of the way. I mean, it's not as though you could be missed easily, is it? Just because I'm six foot five doesn't mean that I'm your, your arm extension at will. Oh yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah, but it's people that, yeah, but it's people that are six foot or five foot ten or whatever it is, they come up to me and say, yeah, I need the jam jar at the back of the top shelf, which is pretty much in the next aisle. Do you follow it? The little old ladies always say to you, Oh, oh, aren't you a tall young man? Oh, aren't you lovely? Yes, that's where they're... I like that bit. I don't mind that bit. Yeah. Buy a different fucking jam. <laughs> or just learn to accept that you are not a top shelf kind of person. Yeah. And... I can't reach the bottom shelf. My back snaps. <laughs> I've got pancakes on the bottom shelf, I have to fucking make do. I can't buy them bastard pancakes because they're on the bottom shelf. I can't snap my back. They're too I ready. can't snap my shit up because of some pancakes. <laughs> and I don't come and ask some some five foot three little old lady that looks like the top end of a walking stick to come over and pass the fucking pancakes. I just accept the fact that I'm too did, tall. Did you just say it looks like the top end of a walking stick? Yeah. That's me. And I don't snap my shit up for it. So anyway, how do you feel now that we've got some of those off our chest? I feel like I have, um, I feel like I've delivered like a, a big parcel of stress to somewhere in the nether. I mean, there are loads of pet peeves that we didn't talk about that I could talk about and I'm gonna just say a couple randomly, like Donald Trump is one of my pet peeves. Politics is a pet peeve of mine. Yeah, we don't like politics. No, we? not into it. Drama is a politi is, hate, is we, a pet peeve of mine. I hate drama. We, we don't like drama. No, don't like any of that. So, what are your pet peeves? Yeah, we want to know what yours are. Thanks for joining us for uh, Tea Time Tuesday. Yeah, cheers guys. Yep. Um, join us next week when we talk about another random subject and have a bit of a stupid do about it please comment underneath and subscribe and let us know what to your him pet peeves are. and to me remember yeah, it's a fight but pet peeves doesn't just mean pet peeves it's not one of those it means what pisses you off what gives you the shits as we like to say in australia <laughs> oh <Anyway>, yeah <laughs> bye